In Bhakti Ratnakara, there's a description of when Raghava Goswami took Srinivas Acharya and Naratam Das Thakwa on Vraj Mandal Parikrama. When they reached Varshana, Raghava told them, Here is Rishabhanupur, also known as Varshana. Near this mountain is the residence of Rishabhanu Maharaj. On this exotic mountain, Rajendra Kumar performed the Dan Leela hidden from the view of others. Here, Radharani's feigned anger was broken, and here Krishna became intoxicated by performing his various pastimes. O Srinivas, absorbed in her childhood leelas, Radharani played various games with her sakis here. She delighted in playing with her friends among the hills of Varshana as she passed from childhood to adolescence. We'll now take you on a journey through these sacred hills to visit the temples and see the places where the Supreme Personality of Godhead and His Eternal Consort performed their transcendental pastimes together 5,000 years ago. Varshana is one of the richest areas of Radha and Krishna's pastimes. Even now they meet in the beautiful forests here every day and one can feel their transcendental presence everywhere. Actually, Srimati Radharani appeared in Raval near Gokula on the eastern side of the Yamuna. And when Krishna moved to Vrindavan at the age of three years and four months, she moved there also. When Krishna was six years and eight months, he moved with his parents Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda from Vrindavan to Nandagram. At that time, Srimati Radharani and her parents, Maharaj Rishabhanu and Mother Kirtida, moved to Varshana, which is just eight kilometers away. In the Padma Purana it is stated that at the beginning of creation, Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva all wanted to do some service for Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham, so they could get some dust from his lotus feet. Lord Shiva asked if he could become a hill in the Dham, and the Lord allowed him to become Nandishvara hill at Nandagram. Seeing how Lord Shiva had received this great mercy from Krishna, both Lord Vishnu and Lord Brahma then appealed to him to also become hills in Vraj Mandala, and Krishna allowed them to take their places in Varshana. Lord Brahma's four heads became four light-colored hills, and Lord Vishnu's head became a fifth darker-colored hill. Here we see a map of Raj Mandala. Varshana is towards the top left side. This is the Varshana area. We'll do the full Parikrama, which is about seven kilometers. First, we go through Varshana town and take the lower path and go on to Velaska, which is the head of Lord Vishnu. Then we'll come back down and pass through Sankari Kaur and enter the village of Chitra Devi, one of the Astasakis or eight main girlfriends of Srimati Radharani. Then we'll go to Krishnakund and up to Morkutia. From there we'll cross over to Manga and then proceed through the forest up to Danga and the Jaipur temple. From the Jaipur temple, we'll go to the Sriji Mandir, which is the main temple of Srimati Radharani, said to be situated on the site of Maharaj Vrishabhanu's palace. The temple looks out over the town and is a fitting tribute to Radharani, the pleasure potency and divine consort of Lord Krishna, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. In Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, we find the following prayer Devi Krishna Mai Prokta, Radhika Paradevata, Sarva Lakshmi Mai Sarva, Kanti Sammohini Para. 
The transcendental goddess Srimati Radharani is the direct counterpart of Lord Sri Krishna. She is the central figure for all the goddesses of fortune. She possesses all the attractiveness to attract the all-attractive personality of Godhead. She is the primeval internal potency of the Lord. We set off through the town and first visit a temple dedicated to Maharaj Vrishabhanu, Mother Kertida, and their son Shrida, the brother of Srimati Radharani. The owners are competing with the Sriji temple and are also claiming that this is where King Vrishabhanu's palace was. After passing through the town, we enter the lower part of the Gavavan forest. Gavavan means the forest of caves and it is said that 5,000 years ago there were many caves here which Srimati Radharani and Lord Krishna would meet in and enjoy pastimes in. To our right we see the Jaipur temple situated on the hill which is the second head of Lord Brahma. Before we go through Sankari Kaur to Chiksoli Gram, we'll go up to Velaska on the left of the path, which is the head of Lord Vishnu. Here someone has built a throne for Srimati Radharani. Opposite it is a throne for Lord Krishna. Velaska means the place of pastimes and here Shishi Radha Krishna had many beautiful leelas together. From up here we get wonderful views across to the temple of Srimati Radharani. We can also see the Jaipur temple. The forest here is very beautiful and quiet. Some of it is still practically untouched, just as it was in the time of Lord Krishna. Actually, the whole area is saturated with the pastimes of Lord Krishna and Srimati Radharani, and they're still going on here today. There's a little ashram here, and in front of it is a Ras Mandala with an old swing. Srimati Radharani and Lord Krishna would perform their holy pastimes in this area. They would collect golden jugs filled with aguru, vermilion, musk and sandalwood liquids and jewel studded syringes. They gathered balls of camphor and flowers, quivers filled with flower arrows, beetle nuts, garlands and flower scented water. Then with their gopi friends they would get onto a stage and blissfully sprinkle each other with these substances while piercing each other's hearts with the arrows of their beautiful glances. Hare 
Some of the gopis threw different types of colored powder balls at Krishna. While Srimati Radharani and her intimate friends lovingly sprayed him with scented waters from their syringes. Krishna was so expert that he could send a spray into the air from his syringe and as it went up into the sky it divided into a hundred and then a thousand streams. Then as it came down again onto the gopis it became a hundred thousand and then ten million streams as it inundated the gopis. The gopis tried to surround Krishna and throw fragrant powders on him, but he expanded himself and magically grabbed each one and smeared their faces with colored powder. Srimati Radharani sprayed Krishna with scarlet colored fragrant water and the drops attached to his body, making him look like the blackish-blue evening sky, full of brilliant red-colored stars and moons. In this way, it looked like there was a dark cloud present on earth, and that this cloud was being attacked by unlimited amounts of fragrant rain, and was itself being struck by lightning in the form of the golden-colored gopis. All this became so ecstatic that they all became overwhelmed. After this had been going on for some time, Radha and Krishna were placed by Vrindadevi and Kundavali on a wonderful, large swing. The Sakis pushed them faster and faster until Srimati Radharani became frightened and in desperation grabbed hold of Krishna making him very happy. As they swung, their earrings swayed, their hair flew in the breeze, and their flower garlands swung to and fro. Srimati Radharani asked her girlfriends for help, but the Sakis couldn't hear what she was saying, and they thought to themselves, this swing has become very restless because of Radhika's swinging. She must be very satisfied with us, having her desires fulfilled in this way. Perhaps now she wants us to join her. They then also climbed on the swing with Srimati Radharani and Lord Krishna. With Srimati Radharani on one side and Lalita Devi on the other side, Lord Krishna looked like a great monsoon cloud surrounded by lightning bolts. Then Krishna expanded himself and sat next to each gopi on the swing. One of our acharyas says that if in this world a wonderful tamal tree could fly in the sky on a golden mountain, fully entwined by golden vines, it might resemble Krishna embraced by the gopis on that swing. Now we'll go back down the hill to go through Sankari Kaur. The name means narrow gully, and behind it is Chiksoli Gram, the village of Chitra Devi. Here we meet up with some of our ISKCON devotees, and we enjoy hearing the pastimes that occurred here with them. As dutiful village girls, Srimati Radharani and her girlfriends would take their parents' dairy products from town to town in the area to distribute them. But Krishna and his boisterous cowherd boyfriends would regularly try to stop them 
and transcendentally interfere with them by trying to charge them taxes or steal their products or just break the clay pots they were carrying them in on their heads. Raghava Goswami, who himself is Champak Lata, another of Srimati Radharani's Astasaki girlfriends, says the enjoyment the divine couple had on this narrow path between the two mountains is indescribable. One time, Srimati Radharani and her girlfriends were coming up through the gully with yoga pots on their heads, and Krishna and the cowherd boys tried to stop them from passing towards Varshana. The gopis told them that they were innocent cowherd girls engaged in the service of their parents, taking their dairy products to the market for them. But Krishna boldly declared, I've heard about you girls sneaking around the forest on the back paths, trying to sell your yogurt on the black market. The gopis protested that this was not at all true, but then Krishna pushed Srimati Radharani back towards the gully. Radharani pushed Krishna back, and then all the boys grouped together, and all the girls grouped together, and they started pushing each other back and forward. Sometimes the gopis would push the boys back down the path towards Varshana, and sometimes the cowherd boys would push them back down the gully. As this was going on, Krishna's funny Brahmin friend, Madhu Mangal, was laughing at the gopis and making remarks about how weak they were. What could they do against these powerful cowherd boys, he said. Finally, after much pushing and shoving and shouting, Krishna knocked Srimati Radharani's yoga pot off her head, and it smashed here on the rocks at the side of the gully, making Madhu Mangal roar with laughter. Even today, we can still see the stain left on the rocks from Srimati Radharani's yogurt. Here we see Lalita Devi in her peacock-colored clothes, chastising Krishna for doing this mischief. She's famous for her fiery nature and sharp transcendental tongue, and later will go to her village named Unchigam. Then the gopis decided to take revenge. They retreated back to Chitradevi's village and gathered reinforcements, and then in a group of 200, carrying many pots of yogurt, they returned up through the gully. One by one the gopis came through to the top, and initially Krishna and the cowherd boys laughed, thinking they were going to have more fun at their expense. However, to the cowherd boy's surprise, more and more gopis kept coming through Sankari Kaur until the boys were completely surrounded. Then the gopis began pouring their yogurt over the heads of Krishna and his cowherd boyfriends. A number of gopis gathered around Madhu Mangal, and together they poured many pots of yogurt over him. Madhu Mangal cried and told them, you're going to become guilty of the sin of drowning a Brahmin if you don't stop. However, the gopis just laughed and poured more yogurt on him. After this victory, the gopis went back to Chitradevi's village and celebrated. They say that during the fighting, Krishna's turban unraveled and fell on this rock, leaving a white streak running across. They also say that this is the impression of Krishna's stick.
The pilgrims put yogurt on the rock where Srimati Radharani's pot broke, and the monkeys get to have a yogurt feast. We enter Chitradevi's village, now known as Chiksoli Gram. We go down through the gully, past the cow dung drying area. This dung is the common cooking fuel in Vraj Mandala. While the gopis were celebrating, Krishna and the cowherd boys sneaked into the village and quietly entered the butter storehouse of Chitradevi's parents. They feasted on the dairy products there, but Chitradevi saw them and locked them in from the outside. Krishna and the cowherd boys climbed through the only window in the storehouse and made their escape. Madhu Mangal was the last one to try to climb through the window, but unfortunately he was too fat to fit through and he got stuck half in the room and half out of the room. When Srimati Radharani came with Chitradevi and the other gopis, they found that Krishna and the cowherd boys had escaped. But then they noticed a strange round-looking thing stuck in the window. It was Madhu Mangal's rear end. The gopis took turns beating on Madhu Mangal inside the room, and he, with his head out the window, called out, Krishna, help! However, Krishna had already made his escape and was not around to assist Madhu Mangal. Then the gopis tied up Madhu Mangal and took him to this nearby kund named Krishna Kund or Radha Sarova. They tied a string to his seeker and threw one end over a branch of a tree and they took it in turns to pull on the string. Each time they pulled, Madhu Mangal called out, Krishna, help! And finally Krishna appeared on the scene. Above the kund is Morkotir, which means the place of the peacocks. One time on the Navami day, immediately after Radhastami, Srimati Radharani became very angry with Krishna and wouldn't speak to him at all, no matter what he did to try to pacify her. In her mood of transcendental anger, she came here to this beautiful kund. Krishna then assumed the form of a peacock and danced in very amazing ways for the pleasure of Radharani. She became totally captivated by the peacock's beautiful dancing and then assumed the form of a peacock herself. In this way, Lord Krishna and Srimati Radharani danced together here on the side of this hill in the form of peacocks. After they danced on the hill for some time, they threw ladus to the gopis who were still sitting by the kund. On the altar of this temple is a nice painting of this pastime. Let's climb the hill and have darshan.
It's very difficult to photograph or video this picture, but this day was the cricket test between Australia and India, and the Babaji's here were distracted listening to it on the radio. In this way, we were able to get some footage. Here we see the painting of Radha and Krishna dancing as peacocks. It is said that it was painted by one blind devotee who had darshan of the pastime internally and then was empowered by Srimati Radharani to paint the scene. From the roof we get a nice view of the surrounding Vraj Mandala. Beneath us is Radha Sarova, where we were a few minutes ago. In front of us we see Dohani Kund, where Vrishabhanu Maharaja's Goshala was. Once Srimati Radharani was milking cows here when Krishna came disguised as a gopi and said, You don't know how to milk cows properly. Here, let me show you how it's done. Seeing the new gopi's expertise, Radharani asked her, Please teach me how to milk like that. And she sat down with Krishna. Krishna told her, All right, you see how I milk, and then do it exactly as I do. Then he revealed his transcendental form to Srimati Radharani, who became completely overwhelmed with ecstasy, being with her Shyam. Once Mother Yashoda came here with Krishna to help Mother Kirtida milk the cows. At that time, Srimati Radharani also came, playing with her girlfriends. Then Mother Yashoda sat Radharani down next to her and decorated her face very beautifully all the time praying that Srimati Radhika could become the wife of her beloved Krishna. We go down to the bottom of the hill again and set off for Mankutir on the top of the next head of Lord Brahma. One time Radha and Krishna were having their pastimes here in the Vaishana area and Krishna was thinking how to please Srimati Radharani by glorifying her beauty. There was an effulgent full moon that evening which looked captivating. So Krishna told Srimati Radharani, Your face is so beautiful. It looks just like the full moon. Srimati Radharani didn't know what to make of this, and she looked at the moon. She saw spots on it. This aroused her mood of man, or transcendental anger. He's saying that I have a spotty face. She wouldn't speak to Krishna, or have anything to do with him. Whatever he said, she ignored him, and finally Krishna fell at her lotus. Wherever Srimati Radharani goes, her gopi friends go with her. So when she moved from Vrindavan town to Varshana, they all came too. And now the villagers of the Astasakis, Radharani's eight main girlfriends, can still be found here. They surround Varshana like a protective circle and will visit them all one by one. The first village we'll visit is Unchigam, just to the west of Varshana, where Lalita Devi lived. This temple, 
the Lalita Saki Mandir, is situated in the same spot that her father's palace stood 5,000 years ago. She is the leader of the Astasakis and as famous as Srimati Radharani's constant companion and follower. The deities are named Radha Lalita Bihari and on their right is Lalita Devi herself. Her parents are Vishok and Sharada Devi and her husband is named Bhairava, a close friend of Govardhan Gopa, the husband of Chandravali. Lalita Devi is 27 days older than Srimati Radharani and as such she is the eldest of Krishna's gopi friends. Her complexion is described as being the color of the yellow pigment Garochana and she dresses in garments like peacock feathers. She is famous for being hot-tempered and contrary by nature and she teaches Radharani the art of jealous anger. When the arrogant gopis pick a fight with Krishna, she is at the forefront of the conflict. Her special service is serving the divine couple Tambula and Beetle Nuts and she is assisted by Rupa Manjari. She carries a flower umbrella for Radha and Krishna and is expert at decorating them with flowers. She also decorates the cottages where the divine couple rest at night. In front of the altar is this Sheila, which was found when the temple site was being excavated. If we look carefully, we see the forms of Shishi Radha and Krishna naturally imprinted on it. From the roof of the temple, we have a clear view of the surrounding Vraj Mandala. On our right is Deha Kund, where the gopis surrendered everything to Krishna, even their bodies. As we come around to the left, we see Sakigiri Paravat, the hill of the Sakis, and there the gopis had many transcendental pastimes with Lord Krishna. Under this shrine is one special Shila, but we'll tell you that pastime when we get there. Behind the trees are the Bhajan Kutir and Samadhi of Narayan Bhatta Goswami, who was a follower of the six Goswamis and who continued their mission of locating the pastime places in Vrindavan after they left this world. To the left again is Triveni Koop. Once Krishna and Balaram were herding the cows in this area and the cows became thirsty. At that time there was no water nearby so Krishna used his flute to dig a hole. He then summoned the waters of the Ganga, Yamuna and Saraswati rivers. It is said that up until today those same rivers are present here in this Triveni Koop. This is a 550 year old temple of Lord Balaram. In the far distance is the temple of Srimati Radharani and the hills of Varshana. Behind this hill is Davaro, the village of Tunga Vidya. Far off to the west, we see the temple of Sudevi, another one of the Astasakis, in the town of Sunera. We go down the hill and visit the first of these transcendental places, Deha Kund. One time Lalita was bathing in this Kund 
and Radharani was nearby. Krishna came and asked Lalita and Srimati Radharani for a gift, and Radharani said, I cannot live without you even for a second, so I offer you my mind, body and wealth. Krishna reciprocated by telling Srimati Radharani that his form would always remain within her mind, so she would see him always. In this way, an exchange of transcendental forms took place, and now this kund is called Deha Kund, the kund where the bodies were exchanged. We go into the temple and have darshan of the deities, Shishi Radha Deha Bihari. As we walk over to Sakigiri Parvat, we see some of the local devotees at their daily activities. This shrine houses the Chitra Vichitra Shila. One time Radharani arranged a wedding ceremony for Lalita and Krishna. In her ecstasy, Radharani's veil fell from her head and landed on this rock, which then melted in ecstasy, leaving the impression of Radharani's veil imprinted in it. Even today, the impression made by Radharani's veil can be clearly seen. We now proceed up to the top of the hill. This place is called Chapan Katora, or the place of the 56 eating bowls. Krishna Balaram and the cowherd boys would take their lunch here, and to facilitate them, the hill manifested all these natural eating bowls for them to take their prasadam from. From here, we get a nice view back to the temple of Lalita Devi. We come back into the village to visit the Bhajan Kutir and Samadhi of Narayan Bhatta Goswami. After the six Goswamis left this world, he continued their mission of uncovering the lost pastime places of Radha and Krishna. It is said that he would carry with him a Ladu Gopal deity which would speak to him as he moved around Vraj Mandala and tell him when they came to a special place. This was said to be the same Ladu Gopal deity that Vajranath, Lord Krishna's great grandson, carried with him and helped him identify the holy places 5,000 years ago. We now come to the temple of Lord Balaram. Actually, Unchigaon is a place of conjugal pastimes, but Lord Balaram, being the elder brother and having Krishna's safety in mind, is never so far away. On the altar are Revati and Balaram, and due to his absorption in Krishna, the deity of Balaram is black in color. On our map we see Kamai, the
the village of Vishaka Devi. We come bouncing into town, trying to find her temple. After some exploring, we find the right place. Here we see the altar. On our right of Radha and Krishna is Vishaka. Of the Astasakis, Vishaka is second only to Lalita. She appeared at the exact same time as Srimati Radharani. Vishaka has a complexion like lightning and dresses and garments decorated with stars. Krishna Govinda Hare Murare Inathanara Srila Vishnath Chakravati Thakur prays, O bestower of benedictions, O causelessly merciful Vishaka, within the society of the beautiful damsels of Raja, you are the closest replica of Sri Radha herself. Therefore, overlooking my hundreds of offences, Please be kind upon me and accept me as your maid servant. She is adept in all aspects of amorous diplomacy and she knows all the arts of how to make a reconciliation with an angered lover, how to bribe him and how to quarrel with him and she is the perfect counsellor of the divine couple. The temple overlooks a nice kund, known as Vishaka kund. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami prays, Vishaka Devi is the place where the youthful divine couple enjoy affectionate and playful joking pastimes. Her sweet transcendental singing eclipses the voice of a cuckoo. I pray that Vishaka Devi may become pleased with me and accept me as her student. We move on to the village of Kerala, which is said to be the village of Champaklata. Here we find a beautiful little kund, an ideal place for chanting and remembering Krishna. Champaklata has a complexion the color of a blossoming Champak flower and garments the color of a blue jay's feather. She is the third of the Astasakis and is one day younger than Srimati Radharani. Champak Lata can carry out her activities cloaked in great secrecy. She is expert in the art of logical persuasion and is a diplomat skilled in thwarting Radharani's rivals. Her special service is fanning the divine couple with a chamara and offering them jeweled necklaces. She is accomplished in the art of fashioning things from clay and is an expert cook, knowledgeable in all the literature describing the art of gourmet cooking. She is famous as Mr. Hasta, Sweet Hands, because of her expertise in making different kinds of candy. She is a specialist at collecting fruit, flowers and roots from the forest. Champaklata is the leader of the gopis appointed as the protectors of the trees, 
creepers and bushes of Vrindavan, and her maidservant is Gunamanjari. Overlooking the Kund is the sitting place of Vallabhacharya. Nearby is a little temple of Radha and Krishna. We find a small ashram looked after by this rather esoteric looking Nimbaka Sadhu. Outside is a large samadhi said to be that of Vajranab, the great grandson of Lord Krishna. On our map, we see Chiksoli Gram, the village of Chitra Devi. We already visited here when we did the Varshana Parikrama. In the middle of the village, on the right hand side of the Parikrama path, is this Shila, which is said to be very ancient. On it is written a verse referring to Chiksoli Gram. Some of the villagers told us that it was from Srimad Bhagavatam, although we don't find such a verse there. But they take it as a type of verification of the antiquity of the village and its connection with Chitra Devi. Bhakti Ratnakara says that here Srimati Radharani dressed in a most wonderful way, and when Krishna saw her, he became overwhelmed with ecstasy. Srila Rupa Goswami describes that Chitra Devi, the fourth of the Astasakis, is 26 days younger than Srimati Radharani. Her complexion resembles the color of kumkum, and she dresses in crystal colored garments. Her father is Chatura, her mother Charchika Devi, and her husband is Pitara. Chitradevi's service is preparing cloves and flower garlands for Radha and Krishna. Like her father, she's very learned in the astrological sciences. She can read between the lines to perceive the author's hidden intention and is a scholar of many different languages. She is an expert cook and can identify the ingredients of cooked food preparations merely by glancing at them. She also makes various kinds of nectarian drinks. She makes wonderful music by playing water pots filled with varying amounts of water. Chitra Devi is well versed in the theory and practice of protecting domestic animals, in botany, and in crafting utensils from glass. A skilled gardener, she is the leader of those gopis who collect herbs and creepers with medicinal properties from the forest. Tungavidya lived in a village named Davaro, which is about three or four kilometers south of Varshana. As we drive there, we look back and get a wonderful view of all the hills of Varshana. On the left is Manga. In the center are Morkutia, the Jaipur temple, and Srimati Radharani's temple. Here we're looking through Sankari Kaur. On the right hand side is Velaska. We drive all the way through the village and at the other end we find a nice little temple dedicated to Tunga Vidya and Radha and Krishna. Bhakti Ratnakara describes that Davara means eyes filled with tears. Here Krishna cried tears of ecstasy at the sight of Srimati Radharani. The deities here are exceptionally beautiful 
and the devotees look after them wonderfully. Tunga Vidya is on our right of the divine couple. She is a celebrated music teacher and an expert singer and veena player. And here we see her with her veena in her hand. Tunga Vidya is the daughter of Pushkara and Maita Devi and is the fifth of the Astasakis. She is 15 days younger than Srimati Radharani and has a complexion like Kumkum and wears white garments. The fragrance of her body is a combination of sandalwood and camphor. Tunga Vidya is married to Balisha and her service to the divine couple is singing, dancing and playing musical instruments. She's hot-tempered and is expert at disguise. Tunga Vidya is of a very scholarly nature and is learned in the 18 branches of knowledge including Rasa Shastra, Niti Shastra and Natya Shastra. Beneath the main deities is this older deity of Tunga Vidya. She is the leader of those gopis who are expert at arranging political alliances with rivals and who fetch clear river water. This little temple is built on the site of an older temple and when they were excavating to build it they found remnants from the original structure. Unfortunately, it was defaced many years ago by the Muslims, although we can imagine that originally it must have looked very nice. From the roof, we look out towards the nearby Kund. There's a hill nearby, and an old sadhu decided to name it Chota Govada or Little Govardhan Hill. A short distance from the temple is what the local people call the Shama Shila. It's actually most of the side of the hill and we can see how the rock is dark colored like Shamsunda with lighter colored streaks across it like Srimati Radharani. we go up onto the top of the Shamashila. Here we can see a cross to Chota Govardhan on our left. Some kilometers away to the far right is Unchigam, the village of Lalita Devi. In front of us is Ratnakund, which is mentioned in Srila Raghunath Das Goswami's Mukta Charita or the story of the pearl pastime. Let's go over there. The story goes that near Nandagram, Krishna planted pearls in the ground and they grew into beautiful pearl trees. Not wanting to be outdone, Srimati Radharani, Tunga Vidya and the other gopis also wanted to grow pearls. So they stole their mothers and planted them around this kund. However, only thorn trees came out of the ground and when their mothers wanted their pearls back, the gopis were forced to go to Krishna and beg him for some of his. We'll explain that pastime in more detail when we go to Nandagram some other time.
Next we'll go to Anjanoka, the village of Induleka. From the road we catch a glimpse of the temple dome. We walk in through the village. Here we find a temple dedicated to Induleka and her dear friends Radha and Krishna. On our right is Induleka and on our left is Lalita. The sixth of the Astasakis, Induleka is three days younger than Srimati Radharani. She is described as having a tan complexion and wears garments the color of a pomegranate flower. Her parents are Sagara and Vela Devi, and she is married to Duabala. By nature, Induleka is contrary and hot tempered. She is skilled in the sciences of palmistry and snake charming using mantras. She is expert in stringing necklaces, in the science of gems, and in weaving various kinds of cloth. Assisted by her maidservant Rati Manjari, Induleka is the leader of the gopis who present ornaments and garments to Radha and Krishna and guard their treasury. Induleka carries auspicious messages that increase Radha Krishna's mutual attraction. She is fully aware of the divine couple's confidential secrets. The temple is on the banks of a nice kund named Kishori Kund. In Bhakti Ratnakara, Raghava Goswami describes, O Srinivas, see here the village Anjanoka, where Radha and Krishna performed their pastimes. One time, Radha was dressing herself in a secluded place. She decorated herself with various jewels, tied her hair, and as she was applying black mascara to her eyes, suddenly the sound of Krishna's flute entered her ears. Immediately Radharani left and came here along with her sakis to meet Krishna. As Radha came before Krishna, he became Outside the temple we find remnants from a previous temple, destroyed by the influence of time. Here the devotees are erecting a shrine at the place where the pastime is said to have occurred. Back in the village, bridge bussy life is going on as usual. From Davaro, we go to Rakoli, the place of Ranga Devi. Here there is a temple dedicated to her and Radha and Krishna on the banks of the small kund. When we went there, the altar was unfortunately closed, although we still managed to video the deities through the bars. Ranga Devi is to our right of Radha and Krishna, and to our right again is an older deity of her. Described as having a complexion the color of a lotus filament, Sri Ranga Devi is the seventh of the Astasakis. Dressing in garments the shade of a red rose, she is seven days younger than Srimati Radharani. Ranga Devi and her twin sister Sudevi 
are the daughters of Rangasara and Karuna Devi. Ranga Devi is described as being an ocean of feminine words and gestures. She's very fond of joking with her dear friend Radharani whilst in Krishna's company. Amongst the various activities of diplomacy, she is especially skilled in the art of patiently waiting for the enemy to make the next move. She is an expert logician and due to previous austerities, she's attained a special mantra which can attract Krishna. Ranga Devi is the leader of those gopis who are very expert in the use of perfumes and cosmetics, in the burning of aromatic incense, carrying coal in the winter and fanning the divine couple in summer. Her friends have the ability to control the jungle lions and deer. Her special service is supplying Radha Krishna with sandalwood paste. The last of the villages of the Astasakis that we'll visit is Suniragran, which is to the west of Unchigaon and Varshana. This is the village of the eighth Saki, Sudevi, the twin sister of Ranga Devi. At the entrance to the village is a temple dedicated to her. We go in to have darshan but find that Radha and Krishna are here without any deity of Sudevi. The deities were rather neglected as the old Pujari is invalid and is not able to do much for them. Sudevi is married to Vakrekshana, the younger brother of Ranga Devi's husband. She is sweet and charming by nature. Her form and qualities are so similar to those of her sister that they are often mistaken for each other. Sudevi always remains beside Srimati Radharani, arranging her hair, decorating her eyes, and massaging her transcendental body with scented oil. She is expert in training parrots and roosters, in sailing, oil body massage, starting fires, reading omens, in horticulture, making leaf spittoons, playing music on bells, and decorating couches. Her service is serving water to the divine couple. Sudevi is the leader of those gopis who act as spies by disguising themselves and moving amongst Radharani's rivals to uncover their secrets. They also serve as the deities of the forests of Vrindavan, overseeing the protection of the birds and bees.
ಶಿಶಾಲುಕ ಪ್ರವೇಶ ನಿದ್ರಚರೀಯುತ ಜೀವ just a couple of kilometers from sanera is kadam kandi a beautiful kadamba grove this is a very nice forest area tucked away in a valley between two hills all of raj mandala used to be full of these trees but now there are very few remaining however here at kadam kandi there are 30 or 40 kadamba trees vishingavamana shri madhusudana rajendra nandana shama vishingavamana shri madhusudana rajendra nandana shama tanagatena koitabashatena putanagatena koitabashatena jayo dasarakti rama jayo dasarakti rama and krishna would perform their rasa dance here hidden from the view of varshana and nandagram rama krishna haya deva jasoda dula la govinda gopala vrindavana purandara jasoda dula la govinda gopala vrindavana There's a small ashram here on the banks of a kund. By the ashram we find this kadamba tree embracing a tamal tree. Behind the ashram is this bigger kund where we see some of the locals at play. North of Radha Kund is Surya Kund where many wonderful pastimes took place 
A big temple to the sun god is being built here on the banks of the Kund. Inside we see the deity of Surya Narayan, the sun god who is an expansion of Krishna. Some say that this is an original 5,000 year old deity of Vrindavan. One time Ponamasi told Abhimanyu that if you want to become more opulent you should engage your wife in Surya Puja, the worship of the sun god. So his mother Jatila came here to Surya Kund with Srimati Radharani to worship the old deity of Surya Narayan which is found here. However, they needed Brahmins to do this puja. They looked around and who should they see but one plump Brahmin walking with his very dark-skinned disciple, both wearing bright saffron cloth. It was Madhu Mangal and Lord Krishna in disguise. Jatila explained that she wanted them to do Surya Puja for her daughter-in-law, but both Brahmins said, Oh no, we can't do any puja for young women. We're very strict brahmacharis. Jatila begged them to do the puja, and the plump Brahmin reluctantly agreed, and then negotiated with Jatila, demanding a very high price in Ladus. Jatila had never heard of paying in this way, but she kept quiet and told the Brahmins to please guide Srimati Radharani in the Surya Puja. Then the dark-skinned Brahmin said to Radharani, Beautiful, auspicious girl, what is your name? Jatila whispered in Krishna's ear, Don't talk in this way. Krishna acted as if surprised and exclaimed, Indeed, she's very pious. Her chaste devotion to her husband is famous. The plump Brahmin burst out laughing, which bewildered Jatila. Then the dark-skinned Brahmin chanted, O worshipable sun god, I humbly worship you. O moving eye that nourishes those beneath you, please grant the treasure of your bending sidelong glance to this poor person. I offer my respectful obeisances to you. However, this mantra has a dual meaning. O Radha, whom I worship in a secluded place, O girl whose eyes are restless, O girl whose lips make me restless with desire, please grant the treasure of your crooked sidelong glance to this poor person. O Radha, splendid as the sun, I offer my respectful obeisances to you. This was becoming very difficult for Jatila to deal with, so she asked the plump Brahmin, what kind of never-before-heard mantra does this brahmachari recite? Madhu Mangal laughed loudly and said, O oh elderly lady, considered intelligent among the cowherd women, you may know about the Riri songs of the gopis, but what do you know about our Vedas? Listen, this mantra, which brings auspiciousness to young girls, is found in the third chapter of the Kusameshavi Saka of the Veda. Kusamesha is a name of Cupid, so the word Kusameshavi Saka can be interpreted to mean Cupid's book of amorous pastimes. Everyone laughed and Jatila became embarrassed and remained silent. When the puja was finished, Madhu Mangal demanded his Ladu payment. So Jatila took him to Yavat, leaving Srimati Radharani and her gopi friends here at Surya Kund, free to have pastimes with their beloved Krishna.
We'll also visit Prem Sarova, an important pastime place to the north of Varshana. One time Srimati Radharani was sitting on the lap of Lord Krishna here when one bee buzzed around her and bothered her. Krishna called Madhu Mangal and asked him to chase it away, which he did with great flair and bravado. When Madhu Mangal returned, he announced proudly, Madhu is gone. Madhu means bee, but it also means sweet, and who is sweeter than Lord Krishna? So Radharani took it that Krishna had gone, even though she was sitting on his lap. She cried and cried in separation from Krishna, who tried to convince her that he was still there. However, she wouldn't accept it. This is called Prema Vaichitya, which means a type of madness in love for Krishna, in which the devotee thinks that he is there when he isn't, and that he's not there when he is. In that state, Srimati Radharani and the gopis would sometimes see a monsoon cloud and think it was their beloved Krishna, or they would embrace a tamal tree thinking it was him. Krishna could not convince Srimati Radharani that he was there, and after some time he also began crying. Their combined tears flowed down to form this kund, which is now called Prem Sarova, the lake made of the tears of love of Radha and Krishna. Here we see the presiding deities, Sri Sri Radha Prema Bihari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 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 Hare H